Good morning and welcome to this Informatica webinar entitled Become a Data Quality Detective. Uh, my name is Andy Joss. I'm Head of Solutions and Data Governance here at Informatica. And this morning I'm joined by my esteemed colleague Dagmar Hillmeister. Dagmar, would you like to introduce yourself please? Good morning everybody. My name is Dagmar Hillmeister and I'm Data Governance Sales Specialist. Excellent, thank you. So, for the next period of time we're, we're going to cover a number of different topics specifically around data quality and, and this high idea of becoming a data quality detective. But let's just start a little bit by setting some context and a bit of the scene. So we're seeing that businesses deal with the impacts of data quality issues on a pretty constant basis, yet the understanding of what data quality means is probably not necessarily well understood across many parts of, of our organizations. So in this webinar, we'll explore some of the impacts um, and how some new approaches to data quality are really changing the way organizations utilize data and think about how they manage the data assets that they've got. Now, we're going to be exploring some new technology solutions that are helping organizations investigate and diagnose the causes of various data quality problems and how fixing these issues makes a material impact upon the health of the organization. And we'll show you that through a number of examples a little bit later. Now, data quality has become a critical issue to the success of many business initiatives, you know, whether it be digital transformation or customer centricity initiatives, you know, whatever it happens to be. So actually part of the objective of this webinar is to help you understand what items your detective toolkit needs to contain to help you address these issues. And actually I wanted to start by just trying to make some of this a little bit more visible to you with some very public um, uh, examples. And it's about making data quality issues visible to people. So if I look at the first example we've got, uh, thinking about how the impact of data quality issues, how it can frankly irritate customers and waste organizations' money. So from a waste viewpoint, the example we've got here, um, the, the link will be available in the slides too, is a German power supply who sent the same letter 42 times. That's 42 letters, the same content, the same recipient, and it was all dated on a day which in Germany, which is where the power supply was from, was actually a national holiday. So actually the question that we really need to be asking about all of this is, is how could this happen? And if you want to see the details for this, then you can click on the link uh, you can see on the slide, and that will take you to actually the details of that particular case. But actually, that turns out that that was a mistake in, in some data transfers that happened. So again, data quality has a very visible impact upon you know, customers for an organization. If we take another example, this one's about just annoying customers and actually a loss of trust in organizations. And we just kind of categorize that as what we call embarrassment. And this is actually a large bank who was sending the wrong PIN codes to their customers. So they had 10,000 private customers who were receiving their new cash cards, but actually getting the wrong PIN codes. Now clearly from a customer service viewpoint, that's obviously not great. So, you know, loss of trust is clearly a massive issue because that's obviously a reputational risk to any organization. And this, of course, is a bank, which is that particularly concerning. And again, you can follow the link that you can see here in the slide. But the question we need to be asking is how on earth could this happen? And then the third example we've got is actually how data quality is having an impact. And this particular example is actually around revenue loss and what we've turned an unprofessional impression or maybe some reputational issue which came with that. So this is actually related to uh, an airline situation. And that's actually due to an internal failure on the booking system of the airline. And in fact, actually gave customers free flight tickets. And actually, as a result, the airline ended up cancelling all of those flight tickets. And clearly, customers were pretty unhappy about that. Now, there's more details available on the link. But clearly, that's not a great position for any organization to be in. And it's data quality, which is sitting at the heart of all of the issues that we've just gone through. So again, the question we need to be asking is, how could this happen? And that, I think, comes back to part of where we started all of this, which is about the visibility, and it's also about understanding around data quality. So if we just look a little bit about what we describe as the, the descriptors for data quality issues, these are some of the common terms that we hear, particularly from people who sit in the business parts of our organizations. When they start to talk about data quality problems or issues they've got around quality of data, but don't necessarily know that that's actually what they're talking about. So people may use terms that you know, the, the data is outdated, or it's incomplete, or it's just wrong, or it's inconsistent, or it's missing. There's, there's lots of different terms that people would use to describe 
data quality issues without necessarily realizing that they are in fact data quality issues. So part of our role as detectives is to try and understand in this world of the, the way our business works, you know, when they talk about things, what does it actually mean and what does it translate to into how we start to address some of these issues. So missing data was clearly a data quality problem, so how do we think about how we start to fix some of those issues? So the descriptions I think are quite important to help us understand the needs of our organizations around data quality. But actually I just wanted to bring a couple of examples to you, and this is from the Gartner Group, and if you follow the link here you'll be able to see the, the full blog where they wrote this. But I, I thought it was kind of interesting, this is, this is from uh, January uh, earlier this year, but actually, kind of the two parts to this is that poor data quality is also hitting organization where it hurts. And they've actually gone to the trouble of trying to quantify this to the tune of $15 million as the average annual financial cost in 2017, according to the Gartner survey. And you can see more details if you follow the link. Now, when you think from an organizational viewpoint, $15 million as being the average annual financial cost, I mean, that's just a staggering amount of money. And that's just looking at it from a financial cost viewpoint. There's clearly going to be other issues that are going to be around this, as we've already discovered around reputational issues or professional views of things. So it's not just us that thinks this is important. Actually, it seems it has a material cost to organizations for the issues which come out of this. So how do organizations actually feel data quality? And this is, again, how you know, we think detectives start to play a role in how we can understand these issues and start to fix them. This is a common expressions we'd hear that, you know, well, our reports don't reconcile, or the analytics don't compute correctly, our dashboards are misleading, or our business processes are breaking down, or actually we're having to implement manual controls. So all of these things are data quality impacts. And again, it's about understanding what people are talking about, how they describe things, and being able to translate that into how we can help organizations fix these issues. Let me just take you briefly through the Informatica approach to this, and Dagmar's gonna take you through some more details on this in a minute. But let's just start on a high level. I just wanted to start with actually a fairly simple but really powerful concept. And the first is actually a lot of the information that we need around data quality to understand what data means and, and how it impacts our organization it actually can potentially come from a number of different sources, a number of different places. So part of this may come from, on the top right, it was around the business relevance. So what is this data and what does it mean in a business context? How does it get used in a business context? But clearly data lives in systems and in IT and technology, so therefore there's a technical understanding of what that means and looks like from a technical viewpoint. But also data gets used, it gets accessed by people, which may have an influence on all of this, and of course operational practices, how the data is physically used across the organization and what systems and technologies are applied to that data as data moves around and gets used and consumed. So the whole point about this, this concept is that data quality sits as part of bringing data context to the organization, regardless as to what view they come from or uh, harvesting information from lots of other areas to try and bring meaning and understanding to help us get more value from our data. So this is a pretty powerful concept, and this is something that we've then turned how we take this concept into reality, something we call intelligent data governance. And the whole theme for this series of webinars, of which this is number three, is about reimagining data governance, how the world of data governance has changed. And in the world of data governance, as you can see here, there's lots of assets and requirements for it, but there on the top right is quality of data. And that's paramount, we think, for many organizations in how they unlock the value of their data and we're going to talk about some of the examples about how that happens a little bit later. So I just want to introduce this, this concept a little bit more about becoming a data quality detective. So what do we mean by that? Well, actually, thinking about what this means, we're going to be finding and fixing data quality issues. Actually, we're going to be putting these issues under the microscope. So as a detective would be examining the information that they have, they'd be examining the evidence that they have, they'd be talking to people and trying to understand their viewpoints. We would do all of these things in the world of understanding data and fixing data quality issues. So we're trying to get to the root causes of those issues. And the important reason why we do this, of course, is that fixing data quality issues should be driving business value. And in the terms of, of being a data quality detective, it's really about driving an outcome. It's about understanding what happened, 
you know, understanding the steps that you took to un get that understanding, and then what you do about it. So we're going to refer to this concept of being a data quality detective uh, quite often as we go through the rest of the presentation. So what I want to now do is I want to hand over to Dagmar, and Dagmar is going to pick up this story in terms of how we start to move things forward. But just before I do that, I just wanted to come back to a couple of aspects that we talked about earlier. And that's this idea of the data quality descriptors and some of the dimensions. So it's about understanding how people describe data quality issues, which we started on before. So we think now for a second about how people describe their views and typically how we may respond to that. So an example might be you know, people saying, my data quality is poor. Well, actually, thinking about it, what, what does poor actually mean? You know, at this point, part of this is about trying to translate what someone said into actually what it really means. We also need to think about another example, like, you know, this data is wrong. Well, well actually, what's wrong about it? Um, we don't know, so therefore there's more investigation needs to be done there. There's data that's missing. Okay, well, well what's missing? Be thinking about well the data is wrong okay so what's wrong with it or this data is no good okay well why not so part of the reason for just highlighting this is, is in the role of being a data quality detective we're starting to ask a lot more questions to try and get some meaning some understanding of the way people do things and what that translates into now like a detective is about asking the right questions and about understanding the responses that people are giving you and that's part of the whole profile of how organizations are making data quality a lot more successful to them. But I just wanted to talk about the, con the dimensions of data quality. Now, this is not a, a full list. There's clearly a lot more that could be added to this. But these are some of the probably more common dimensions that we talk through and that we talk to organizations about. So timeliness, for example. What do we mean by timeliness? Well, is the data up to date you know, when it's actually being needed? Then we think about things like completeness. Well, actually, is all the data available? Then we think about accuracy. Does it actually reflect reality? We think about consistency, as, as in, is the data the same everywhere? And validity, is actually, can the data be verified? Is it really the right data that we need or want? So the reason for having this conversation is, is one of the things that we find quite helpful when we're having conversations with organizations who particularly from a business uh, use standpoint, but maybe don't really understand data quality, what it means, we start to talk about some of these uh, dimensions just really to start to inform the debate. Because when we explain this to people, people start to understand why we ask some of these questions and the, potentially some of the impacts on some of these questions. And again, like a data quality detective, it's about translating what we need and the questions we want to ask into terms and understanding that people can help us understand the answers that we need to get from them. So what we've done there is we've just outlined you know, some of the descriptors, uh, the dimensions of data quality. And then what we need to think about then is, of course, is how we move that forward. And that's about mapping the uh, business def uh, requirements to rule definitions. So what do I mean by that? Well, a business requirement is how somebody in the business would start to express the problem that they've got and how we can start to understand what that means. And the rule definition is how we actually express that in a way that says this is how we could start to do some useful things, particularly around the measurement of data quality, which we'll talk about later, and also the remediation of data quality issues, which again we'll talk a little bit about later. So really in terms of starting the process, then um, what's happening here is that we're talking about um, getting things going. Uh, so the start of the process is really about the stakeholders expressing their requirements in their own way. So that's As a detective, that's listening to the people that you're talking to. Translating this into a more meaningful set of descriptors, which is about more under the, what does that really mean? What does that mean in a context that we know and understand? It's about building business definitions of descriptors. Well, actually, that's about capturing the evidence of what people said and what they meant. About aligning these definitions to the requirements, which is actually, well, what, what does that mean? Does that contribute to a pool of evidence that takes it in one direction or not? And also discussing the measurement and measuring of data quality, which is how we're understanding and making progress. So we talked a little bit about starting the process. And in terms of moving forward, and actually one of the things I wanted to leave you with is this concept then of we need to be a translator. And a lot of what we've talked about are some of the basic concepts. We also need to be able to translate what people say and think about data quality into things that we can go and do and execute that measurably enables us to improve the quality of our data to drive business value. So with that, I'm going to hand over to Dagmar. And Dagmar is going to take you through the rest of the story and how being a translator 
and all the capabilities behind that helps drive value for our organizations. Dagmar, over to you. Yes, thank you, Andy. So as Andy said, we need to translate the way stakeholders describe data quality problems into descriptors we can use to take actions against. And this helps us also to have a more informed and meaningful conversation with our stakeholders about how we take the next steps. So let's start with the first analysis. What exactly has happened? Which data sources are involved? Which data types? Which data volumes? What are the possible causes of the data quality issues? Often there is a lack of feeling and insight to data quality requirements regarding the data. There is no holistic and structured data management in place. There is also no, no data governance. So we are talking here about the awareness of data quality. And let's take a closer look at the processes and rules. Are these in place? If they are not, then we have no definition of data standards to maintain our master data. We also need control mechanisms. Often they are not clearly defined or missing. No one feels responsible for the maintenance of the data. Often it is also just a lack of internal resources. And then at the end, of course, the number of data resources, the data sources we have, um, how large, large number of data sources, and last but not least, it's the data itself, which is not accurate. So let's look at a typical example conversation, which we've been listening to in this or the other way. Um, often. Um, it starts, describe what an account looks like. Oh, it's always eight characters long. Letters or just numbers? Oh, just numbers. Is it a formula? Uh, no, it's a randomly generated number. Anything else? Oh, yes, no zeros at the front. So this makes us smile, but, uh, and it seems a trivial conversation, but it's already opened up a number of other avenues for investigation. Just as asked, how is the number randomly generated? Does the number get reused? What generates the number? And what parameters are used to generate the number? How do we get now from this conversation to a business definition and translate this into, a, into the system where we need to capture the rules? Here you see an example uh, of it and uh, there a business user has defined a rule for consistency. And if we go on, once we have this business definition, we can implement the rule. And we do this in several steps. First of all, we build the rule. Then we have the ability to test it. And we can apply it. And you see it here on, highlighted on the, on the slides, um, the screen. Um, green boxes. So it's pretty easy to do this and it gives you the complete transparency of the implementation budget. Nearly 60% of organizations don't measure the annual financial cost of poor quality data, according to the Gartner survey mentioned in the beginning. Failing to measure this impact results in reactive responses to data quality issues, in missed growth opportunity, business growth opportunities, and also in increased risk and lower return on investment. So leading information-driven organizations proactively measure the value of their information assets, as well as the cost of poor data quality and the value of good quality data. And most importantly, they link these directly to key business performance metrics. So measurement criteria can be implemented in corresponding data quality rules. But before you can do this, you first need to add and specify all the data requirements. In addition, there are legal requirements which need to be taken into, into aspect, legislative specifications regarding the content of the data, its way of being processed, its availability and accessibility of data. Further on, we have the requirements from the business. Requirements 
regarding timeliness, completeness and accuracy of data may vary within an organization and at different times. For example, marketing needs address and communication data for, for mailings, whereas sales might be not only interested in their data, but also in product data, which the, pro the prospect might be interested in. And this continues if you take a look at the purchasing department or in addition they need supplier data or invoicing. They need revenue payment terms and discounts which, apply, which are applied to a customer. In addition to these legal and business requirements, there are also some quite technical requirements for the data. We have heterogeneous system landscapes, lots of different applications, databases. All these requirements are translated to data quality rules and based on these rules data quality is measured and thus across all data records. So here you see an example where a rule um, has been run via data profiling and you can see here the um, results. The rules can easily be reused for assessment and reme remediation of any data. So where if you have product data or whatever data you have, you can use these rules. And the next slide shows you the results of the measurement. And in addition, we have also the data quality scorecard, which is for visibility and which you can give back to the business so that people can understand how important the results are. For example, the visibility you see here of 96.53% um, can be sufficient in some cases. In some situations, 100% is needed, so this would be insuff insufficient. At the right side you see the score trend and, and this informs over the time if the measured criteria is getting better or worse. So what does this tell us? We now have, we are, have investigated what the issues are and how we might describe them. We have tangible evidence, we can identify the perpetrators, we can see cause and effect. We can explain what's really happening and we have a basis for maybe difficult conversations because we might need to convince one or the other stakeholder of the data that something needs to happen to better the quality of the data. And new options appear as well. So measurement options. What do we do? Do we do a simple measurement or do we do complex measurement. When you do simple measurement, this is a comparison based on a record level, record by record. You should be careful here. You might destroy data because you don't have a 360 degree view. And the risk of wrong measurement is that the data is not only measured wrongly, but it is also cleansed wrong. So the data has become even worse. You're resembling an amateur detective here, therefore not recommendable. So let's take a closer look at complex measurements. Here you are on, on the professional detective side as you are comparing different data models, different systems. The data of a data model A shall be compared with the data of data model B. The general principle here is to run several measurements to detect further irregularities and relationships. How can you measure the data quality of an IT landscape? You do this using different matching procedures. You can measure within systems, you can measure across systems. You can also take a look at the data quality errors when you provide the data in single stock systems. And of course, take a closer look at the history. In addition, time frames for measurement. How often 
shall you measure. The number of complexity and complexity of the records you want to measure, this needs to be considered and also the measurement rules. In addition, the synchronization processes of the data across the, pro uh, across the systems and the heterogeneity of the data to be integrated. So there are quite a lot of options which you have to think about it and which you can use. So let's put data quality back into context. Let's give the measurement results back to the people in a meaningful way. And one of the meaningful ways is always dashboards. You see here, at one glance, you can see that validity and accuracy have reached the threshold you've set in a, in a data quality rule. However, completeness is not the way we want it to be. Consistency and timeliness is also not as we would like it to be. So this can be a stakeholder from the business can see this at once without having any technical knowledge. And one more things he can even see, he can see the, uh, the outcome, the result of the data quality rules by criticality and also of the data quality rules by types, consistency, timeliness, completeness, accuracy, and validity. You see here, these were measured, and only, only consistency is, you can see, being green. <clears throat> and there are 31 rules against it. Measurement against targets can be done. Also, you can put data quality rules against measured targets. You see this on the, on the right side. And you can align the measurements with the definitions. Measurement in the context of lineage, and this is, you can overlay the data quality on top of the data flow of the data lineage flow. And you see here that the data quality varies. You can see on the, the green ones, <coughs> which talk, tell you that data quality has been is well done, has been achieved, and we have even seen here that there is no measurement at all. If you look at the, at the right side, there are no data quality rules implemented, and where it's yellow and red highlighted, data, data quality needs to be taken a closer look at. We need to act here. You can overlay the same To your business processes. You can see how the quality of data influences part of your business. For example, here data um, accuracy is measured, except on the process in the beginning. So what do we do now? We can present the case. We've taken all the information and present this case to the jury. We wait for their feedback, and then we get started on the remediation. The question is always, how do we do the remediation? Shall we do it manually? Shall we do it automatically? And some things can be done via automation, others not. Often you want to give things back, corrections back to a data steward for manual remediation. And the question here is always, are we fixing the course? Are we fixing at the source permanently? Are we fixing at the source temporarily? or are we fixing somewhere else? Here is an example of a manual remediation. We can, for example, update 
the data in the source system or we can change source systems. And the manual remediation is then routed back to the relevant business users. So what do great detectives need? Of course, they need to be part of a bigger team. The information, how the quality of the data is, comes from the business and we need also technical expertise to remediate the data. We need the right tools and techniques and all needs to be outcome driven. We had a pain and we want to solve this pain. And it needs to be visible in the big picture, in the, in the whole organization. So let's take a closer look at teams, tools, and techniques. I've mentioned earlier the, uh, that we need, need to be part of a bigger team. So to start with data quality, choose a department within your company being open to the topic data governance. Also involve influencers. Cast the data governance team consisting of a management board, project manager, business experts, and IT experts. And then prepare from both sides, IT and business sides, the data and processes, the system and the interfaces. Define targets, expectations, and responsibilities. And most important also, a technology to implement, monitor, evaluate, and control the measuring you are do doing. Access, you need access to data without any negative effect on running operation. You need to, the ability to timely process large data volumes and the ability to integrate data quality processes into application systems. Also important is the visual creation and modification of data, pro, data quality processes. The mapping of complex structures and dependencies You need to have the ability to do interactive data analysis and data profiling and highly automated data validation. And what about the ability to standardize data and to harmonize, or to harmonize it? For example, different representations of the same value. For example, one equals Mr. and two equals Mrs. Data cleansing, reusable business rules and also proactive monitoring, including dashboards, to see the success of your data quality initiatives over the time. So the next slide shows how tools and techniques work together. If you look at the um, upper right corner, you have the rule definition process where we start the whole process which goes then over to implementation of the data quality rules, followed by the measurement and bringing it back to the business users who, who can see the results. So this is an iterative process which you want to repeat several times and will repeat over the time to improve the quality of your data. It doesn't matter where your data resides, whether you have your data in the cloud, whether it's big data, real time, or traditional storage on premise. Wherever the data resides, you might have underneath your, your solutions, which consume the data. And these, cons these solutions are made of products, which are underpinned. And as you can see here, the data quality sits in the middle, which shows clearly the importance of high quality data. And all these things are run on an intelligent data platform. Coming back to the question, how, to what extent automate? As I said, you can do things, rules can be automated, but you might have or you might need to have the ability also to visual 
review, to do a visual review and screening of the data. The reason behind is that as you are looking for the unexpected, you as a person will discover more than a set of rules. Visual review of data is key to success. And once you have reviewed the data, you adapt the set of rules after it, and there is a requirement or you want to do a fine-tuning after each discovery. And as the IT landscape is agile, there are continuously new requirements. Think of mergers and acquisitions, data migrations, changes in business processes, new products, and new markets. So what does success look like? How do I measure the success of a data quality initiative? So first of all, what you would like to do is consolidate the results to key performance indicators. Usually only rule violations are, are identified, and we, by use of different metrics, you can identify a, a quality score for a certain rule, which means that rules are communicated to indicators. It is important to identify useful indicators and guarantee their significance. History of results learned from the past to judge on actual measurement results. Measurement of data input and output at the interface level is important. For example, several source systems deliver data to a target system. To measure and protocol the data at the data extract as well as data input is important. Also important is the measurement of the data quality complaints of your back office. With regard to automation of defined business rules, you can automatically generate reports out of automatic measurements and publish those reports to the relevant departments within the company. And by use of appropriate monitoring me mechanism, various activities can then be initiated. When previously defined threshold values are exceeded, and this can be done from initiating just writing just a simple email up to activation of really follow-up processes. We have spoken already about visual review and screening of data. As mentioned before, you are looking as a human being, you are looking for the unexpected. You as a person will always discover more than a set of rules. So visual review of data is key to success. And then you adapt the rules after the visual review and fine tune the requirements after each discovery. So success with intelligent data governance, once start with a smart scope. Define your project targets, your expectations and responsibilities. Perform a detailed data analysis and identify and define the process critical data on the field level, not on the record level. And enhance and apply this approach to all business critical data. And in doing so, you have become a data quality detective. Fantastic, Dad, Dad Mark. Thank you very much for that. Now, hopefully, what that's taking you through is, is some of the steps, some of the approaches that organizations are taking in terms of understanding the problems they've got about data quality, about how they're starting to address those issues, define those issues, and they think about how to remediate them. And clearly, remediation is a very, very important topic of which we've talked a little bit about this morning, and clearly there's a lot more to that. But the point being is, is actually having visibility of data quality and then doing something about it. That's part of why we see this as being like a data quality detective. A lot of similarities now between the way people approach the work of being a detective in the policing world to what we do in the data quality world. There's a lot of similarities, there's a lot of capabilities which are very similar in terms of approach and style. So we think that organizations who are looking at this approach, this intelligent data governance approach, 
of how they can do all of these things and start to work around that iterative process that Dagmar was talking about earlier, about how we start to define things, we start to implement things, we start to put measurements in place and then look at results and then go around that cycle on a number of times, as many times as needed. Actually, that's part of the whole process that many detectives working in the policing world would go through, looking at different aspects, looking at different angles, and working out whether these things make sense or whether it's going in the right detect uh, direction or not. So we think that if you go down this route, then you actually you've done a really good job of becoming what we call a data quality detective. So what we're taking you through here is really about this whole notion of data quality having a massive impact. And if you think back to the beginning of the slides where we talked about the impact as we were hearing the view from Gartner and some of those stories we were hearing at the beginning about organizations and how data quality impacts things in a very, very visual way. What this is now translating to is that organizations really do start to recognize actually this has a massive impact on them. But actually, we're also dealing with issues that the people who really feel this impact, in many cases, don't really understand what data quality is. And it's not really a well-understood topic. And clearly, we need to think about how we can do more to help translate their problems and their pains into things that we can do to help. And we talked through today about that concept of being a translator, of being translating the needs of our business into how we can physically go and do things to help them overcome those issues. So this idea of the data quality detective is a consistent theme throughout in terms of how we move our organizations forward and use data quality to materially drive value for our organization. And the last point I wanted to leave you with is then just thinking about this isn't just about technology. Yes, technology has a role to play in all of this, but actually it's a combination of things. And it's, again, like this world of detection. You know, no detection the detective works on their own. They actually work as part of a team, and they need a really good team around them because clearly it's a complex area with lots of things to consider. They have a series of tools available to help them do their job, either efficiently or effectively, hopefully both. Again, it's the same with the data quality world. And even if we have the teams of the tools, we have to have the right techniques and the right approaches to enable us to get the best value from all of these things. And hopefully what we've done today is we've walked you through some of those teams' ideas, some of the tool ideas, and some of the technique ideas to help you make data quality a lot more effective and efficient in your organization and use it to help drive value for your organization. So I guess the big, the big question then is, is this the end or the beginning? Well, actually, for many organizations, it may well be the beginning, the beginning of a journey that says you know, we start to recognize as a business the issues that data quality have upon us and how we start to do something about it, how we start to take what we know as an organization, which is very often quite a lot, and how we move that forward in terms of moving our data into a much better place that drives value for our business. And value can be measured in lots of different ways. But for many organizations, this is the beginning of that journey. And that journey has a materially beneficial end. So is it the end? Absolutely not. But in our view, for many, this is very much the beginning. So that's all the material we wanted to cover today. But what we want to do now is just use a little bit of the time that we have left to pick up some questions which have come in. And I'm going to just uh, read out the questions and ask Dagmar to respond to some of those questions. So I guess one of the first questions that we've got come up, actually, was, um, was actually the question was, how easy is it to populate the data quality metrics into the process map, as in we showed on the slides earlier? Is that something which is out of the box? So what's your response to that, Dagmar? Yeah, yes, it is out of the box. And um, you can not only, um, it's done but using overlays. And uh, it's just a click. And um, if you take a look for the uh, slides we have been uh, providing uh, to you, um, you will find this um, when you look at the uh, processes. And um, then uh, you can see the, the overlays. And it's, only, it's not only data, data quality metrics. Um, you can also see uh, responsibilities, the sta stakeholders connected with it. And uh, much more information is uh, uh, contained in the uh, overlays. So yes, out of the box. That's a great answer. And I guess that the one thing that goes with that, of course, is clearly you know, we, we can't just have a standalone process without it actually being connected to anything from a data viewpoint. So our assumption there is that the process has some connection to the data for us to be able to measure it and respond to it. Absolutely. Fantastic. Thank you. So uh, we have take another question. Um, so another question we've got here is, why do you think data quality is so misunderstood? Is more awareness needed? What's your view, Dagmar? Um, the thing is, people, they do understand data quality. 
but often they do not know what to do in case of issues and um, they naturally work around those things. So um, we hope that with this webinar we have shown you a productive way um, to get um, your data quality issues solved. Very good, very good. And on the awareness front, you're, you're obviously you're very experienced in this space. In terms of the, the communities of people, do you get a sense that we need to be doing more to raise the awareness of data quality as a topic? Or it, 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 do you think people instinctively know just it's about translating what they're saying into what we can do? We should, uh, data quality has, is always a topic because um, I've just been involved in, in a business case where um, data quality is, in this case, reporting BI driven. Um, that the CDO tells me um, my figures are not right and uh, I want to have the ability um, to go back from a report directly to the root cause. And um, this, for doing this, you have to have a tool which is able to do this by showing you the, the business process and how the data flows through the systems um, until you find the cause. There, then you need to have the ability also to uh, to remediate the data at once, and this is um, yeah what we deliver to you. Very good, what? very good. Thank you. Uh, so we've got another question here. Um, so defining data quality rules could take some time. Yeah, I guess that's the case. And um, how long should we spend doing this? Um, what you should you you should do is. It, it depends on the, um, what you actually want to do. Um, you should start, define a rule, for example, timeliness, um, accuracy, uh, completeness. You should define a threshold um, in the system and then measure the data against that rule and then fine tune it. So as mentioned earlier, it's an iterative uh, process. And um, don't make don't make it too, too academic. Just start. <laughs> yeah, no, good advice. Good advice. Uh, another question we've got here is: What sort of skills do we need to make data quality efforts effective? That's a good question. Yeah, it's it's depending on on uh, to whom you talk in the organization because the business people will 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 give you an, an, an different answer than IT people. In general, you need the the ability to to get especially business people. Um, talk about the problem, describe the problem, um, get more details, and, and you as a detective, you will act then as a translator for your IT colleagues who will then um, do Im implement the rules from the technical side and measure it. Okay, good. Yeah, that, I, I like that analogy there of, of you know, the detective and the skills. Um, so another question we've got here is how easy is it to implement data quality rules using your tools? I guess the answer is going to be very easy, but maybe yeah. you'd want to expand on that a bit more. <laughs> um, the thing is, it, it, it's, really, it's, it's really easy as it is not um, a technical tool. Um, the, the, uh, the over, it's, it's a tool really for, for, for business users, so um, it's like um, intuitive tool. The, um, the moment you say it, you, um, you, it's self-explanatory and um, it's easy to use. So uh, give, give us a call and we make an appointment and demo the tools. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Get very proactive. That's good. Um, yeah, we have another question here. So uh, should we always aim to fix data quality issues at their source? Oh, good one. Um, yes. Ideally, um, of course, data quality problems uh, should uh, always be solved uh, and fixed at the source. Um, in addition, ideally, you should follow the whole process because always keep in mind that data follows the processes and the processes follow the data and both belong together. Okay, very good. Um, just, I guess, on that point, um, thinking about where we start to remediate data, then clearly fixing at source, I guess, makes sense. But I, I guess for some organizations, that's maybe not necessarily something they can actually do. So what are the alternatives? What are the other techniques that maybe they could apply if they can't fix that source? If they can't fix at source, 
So I'm, I'm just thinking, for example, if, if you know, you've got a, some data which is incorrectly being entered into a system yeah. um, and you can't change the system that the, dentist, yeah. the data is being entered into, are there other places, for example, you could intercept yeah. that data? Yeah, you can, also, you can always um, extract that data and um, extracting it to the, to the target system and, because, and before this data reaches the uh, target systems, you, you also apply data quality rules and, and measure the data so and correct the data then and uh, um, so that you have only um, corrected data in in the target system. Okay, good, good, good. Uh, another question is how automated can the remediation be? Uh, won't we always need some more in, interventions? I guess they mean manual interventions. Yeah, you can, um, you can as mentioned before, you can automate um, business rules, you can automate measurements, there is a lot of things which, which you can automate. However, you should never, um, never forget um, with your eyes, <laughs> you, you should always control what, you, uh, what was done and um, also always control the results. It's a, um, Andy has mentioned earlier, it's the, the collaboration between a team. So here it's collaboration between yourself and the system you're using and the data. Yeah, so, um, yeah. Okay, good, good. Um, another question. We've been doing this, I, I guess they mean data quality, for several years, and we're still finding business units, users really don't understand the concept of data quality. Would your approach help with this? I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. Um, the, the thing is, um, why are they not convinced of, of data quality? Because um, the organizations I'm talking to, they are really, um, they even talk to me about uh, bad atmosphere in one or the other department because um, when you start your laptop and, and read your reports and in the morning and um, um, you are seeing the, the, the data is bad. So, I mean, what, um, what more do you need to, in, to understand that data quality um, is a, a big topic and that it needs to be handled? And I guess that, that whole section you talked about, context of data, I yeah. guess, is probably quite important too. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Um, another question here is, uh, how important is understanding data quality in a business process context? Do business users really need this information? Yeah, well, it's, um, this has to do with, with um, the part of uh, stakeholders and responsibilities. Uh, we are talking here um, about the fact that uh, certain business users are responsible for certain data. And as the data flows through the process, um, think of the example um, that um, you're selling uh, products, your products are via an, an online platform, a new user registers, and uh, he picks a product he wants to buy, and um, so the process is already started. Yeah, so their um, uh, address data is automatically fixed, but uh, what about um, the, uh, the amount, the value of the product, um, and um, he needs to enter his credit data. So in this case, the, uh, um, the uh, invoicing, the purchasing department is, uh, is involved. And uh, you see, and, and they are responsible for the payment data. Yeah? You see, depending on, on where you are in the process, several people, different people are responsible. And these are the stakeholders, and you can define the stakeholders in the system so that you can clearly have a clear process of responsibility. Oh, very good answer, and I like your analogy there of, of kind of how that data flows. It's really good. Um, we've probably got just time just for a couple more questions. So um, another question here: Don't we just need data quality at the end of the process? Oh, that's an interesting um, conversation. Now this relates back to: Shall we cleanse our data at the source? Um, so. Um, I think this is the answer, not at the end, at the beginning. Correct data at the beginning guarantees good processes and good results in BI reports, and last but not least, good business decisions. Okay, that's short and sweet, I like that. Uh, and last uh, question we've just got time for is, uh, what is the impact of improved data quality on an organization? Why would we need to do all of this? Well, the, 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 the impact is, um, as mentioned before, good business decisions and um, that you can, for example, do um, more investment uh, in development of products because um, you've, your data shows that you have uh, more money available for investments, <laughs> investments as you've planned originally. Um, 
So um, this is the uh, uh, monetary aspect. Uh, on the other thing, um, as I think, um, organizational aspects as well. Um, people become happier. And um, so good data is the basis for the complete organization. So I guess just in summary, that sounds like what you said is that like revenue impact, there's a cost impact and a reputation impact. Yes, of course. Okay, that Indeed. would be pretty compelling. So we, we've come to the end of our time now, so we'd just like to say thank you for attending this morning. We hope that you found this, this useful. And this concept of being a data quality detective, we think is something that's resonating with many organizations. There's so much overlap between what's going on, and it actually puts us into a very positive space with our organizations when we start to improve quality through understanding of where it is today and potentially where it will be in the future through remediation. Uh, there are some links in the presentation to take you to some of the other content that we've uh, also supplied. Plus, as part of the Bright Talk, you'll find some attachments, which is including the presentation, plus some links to other activities as well. We'd just like to say thank you very much for your time this morning. We hope you found it useful, and hopefully we'll see you on another uh, webinar in the near future. Thank you for your time. <laughs>